Welcome to more with the Mac Interactive Session. We're going to have some short demos. We're going to have some Q&A. We're even going to have some special guests stop by. So sit back, relax, get your notes and ask questions, and enjoy more, more with, with the, the Mac, Mac Interactive. If you have any Mac question, raise your hand. Hi, Cliff. My only question is, um, can you explain to us how to deal with the notes? I've never used the notes app very much, and I was trying to copy the the notes that you sent to a folder, and I couldn't get it to copy. I really didn't know exactly what to do with them. So. Um, they're read only. That way, don't nobody mess anything up. Um. Now, I think you're probably going to have to open up each individual note, select okay. all, copy, and then paste it where you want it. Okay, that's fine. That's good. Thank you. Um, it probably works best on the Mac if you do it that way, because with the phone or the iPad, you'll have to do a little bit more jumping through hoops, for lack of a better term. But I'll do it on the Mac. On the mm. Mac, you can just copy and paste and put it in text edit or wherever you want it. Okay. 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 Um, I got a file that says it was a DMG thing. It was a Google Chrome for the Mac, and I couldn't figure out how to open it. And I finally did. But what do you do when it says it's an image file, and it's like something like Google Chrome for the Mac? That's you know what I'm talking about? That's just a description. You just VO Shift M and go down to open. You can't con you can't command all that, which okay. is somebody's go to, and you can't VO spacebar. You have to VO Shift M. And go down to open and then VO space bar, enter, whichever your method is, whatever your preferred method is to open it. Okay. Um, and what's the best way to avoid all those multi-finger commands that voiceover tries to give you? Can you always use the um, left and right arrow the commands that I forgot what that's called? Turning on the um, quick, quick nav, nav. Yeah. for everything? Yeah, you can use quick nav pretty much every, anywhere you want. Okay, thank you. I am about to get my hands on a brand new M1 MacBook Air, and I'm wondering, I've got my 2011 MacBook Air that has a bunch of stuff on the hard drive. Not a heck of a lot, but some. And I'm wondering if Mac to Mac works the same way as when you upgrade to a new iPhone and and you can transfer files, data from one to the other. In a way. <laughs> <clears throat> and the reason I say in a way, because it's a little, it's not as painless. So okay. the, basically what you'd have to do is do a time machine backup on a, an external. When you set your new MacBook Air up, you would, you know, sign into your Apple ID. And then when you got to the point where it said, do you want to migrate or set up, you know, or skip this step? You would want to migrate. And when you when you say migrate, it's going to ask you, do you want to do it from a time machine backup PC or whatever? You're going to say a time machine, pick that back up, and it'll bring all that stuff over. Okay, so I need to get, uh, I need to find an external that has enough room to do a decent time machine backup. Okay, before my Mac and remember, dies. you okay. have a 2011, it yeah. was probably still has USB on it. Now, remember, uh, the, yes, the, it does. The new M1 don't have a USB, so you're gonna have to get a toggle yeah. for that if you're if you're gonna get a US or you can get a USB C drive with a USB toggle. So, when you got your new one, all you have to do is plug the USB C into the MacBook Air. Yeah, I'm gonna do something, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do, but. But I just wanted to know if I could do it. If, so I can't do it just from one Mac to another. It, it has to be from a time machine backup. It doesn't have to be. What I would recommend, the way that I would do it is, I would just copy everything that I wanted from that Mac onto a USB drive yeah. or USB-C okay. and then set my other Mac up as new and then bring it and put it where I want it. That's the way that I would do it. Yeah, that's probably the safest option and works, i so. recommend in the future because this is this is my getting to know the class session per se so in the future like next week and beyond i'm going to be doing some screen audio sharing i'm going to be doing some demonstrations so i would recommend that you install zoom on your mac 
and get familiar with what you're doing. That way, if you want to practice, you can, uh, you know, follow along and I will, you know, slow it down if there's some people that aren't as good as others and we can do it together. Um, so, I mean, that I, that's just my recommendation. It's not a requirement, but that's how you're going to get the best experience. So, Cliff, one thing I was wondering about um, when I was going through your recording um, I remember that you always, you know, did the um, quick nav for Safari, but one of the things you mentioned on the, on the thing was that you really don't use the, um, like the um, caps lock or the VO keys that much. So do you kind of use the, the quick nav in a lot of other areas too, on your daily rounds with the Mac? The only place I don't other use than quick, Safari? The only place I don't use quick nav is when I'm in the edit field. Other than that, I'm using quick nav everywhere I'm at. Really? It just, it just wow. gives me le- it just gives me less keys to have to push. Yeah. Wow. So so you're doing the rotor a lot then, right? That's on the quick nav. Yeah. It is, is that kind of how you get around? Yep. I mean, but I think I mean I know where everything is on my Mac and the rotor is not as intuitive or not. Let me let me back up. I'm not gonna say it's not intuitive, but it's not as necessary as it is on the phone because the only place you really need the rotor is in safari i mean there are other places you can use it like notes and pages Mm -hmm. or any uh even email if you're looking for links and stuff but as for basic navigation you don't need the rotor to navigate um you know like if you're going to go to a folder or open up a file and things of that nature so and you do basically all of that from your um, quick nav, right? That's yes. what you're saying. Yes. That's cool. I want to learn how to do that. No, cool. No, we're going to we're gonna do all that, but I got to take some baby steps because I don't know how new everybody <laughs> is. And like I said, this is, I'm getting to know the class. I mean, I doubt that all 83 of you guys showed up, but <laughs> there's a good many of them. <laughs> all right. I'm going to tell you because I know what your question is. System, <laughs> Alan, this is system, you later. system preferences. Interact with the... And I got to go to it because I forgot what it's called. <clears throat> preference pane. Go to system preferences, interact with your preference pane, or hit the tab key, whichever one you choose to do. I'm lazy, so I usually type the first couple of letters of what I'm looking for. So I would type SO for software update. Once you get the software update, you VO spacebar. Once you get into it, then you just VO. Once you're into it, you VO right arrow. Until it says checking, it'll, it'll say checking for update. And then if there's an update, it'll tell you such and such an update is available. Would you like to update now? You'll be VO space bar on it for yes. More than likely, you're going to have to punch in your Mac password to authenticate so it knows that you're not a robot. Once you do that, it'll download, restart a couple times, and install the update. The other way that you could do it is you could VO. M from the, the finder, the main finder window, 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 go down to system up the system preferences and do the exact same thing. Or you could do VOM and go into about my Mac and it'll tell you if there's an update in there also. So to give everybody a recap, Misty asked earlier, or was it yesterday, how to check for updates by herself on her Mac. So them are the instructions that I'm giving her now. Again, system preferences, hit the tab key or go over VO right arrow to the um, preference pane. It's SO for software update or VO right arrow till you get to it. VO space bar, it'll check for updates and let you know if there is one. Then you just follow voiceover's instructions because if anybody did the quick um, getting started quick guide, you know that voiceover will tell you exactly everything you need to know. There's nothing that voiceover is going to tell you wrong. Apple has really taken its time with accessibility on the app on the Mac to let you know how to navigate and get around. And that's granted you haven't turned your hints off. If you turn your hints off, then I can't help you. But if you leave, if you if your hints are on, voiceover will tell you exactly everything you need to know. When you go into system preferences under the menu, um, and you then hit the tab key, and that takes you to the the pain instead of I it usually will, it, I it usually will, do voiceover yeah, me, and do, page down or I'm gonna I'm gonna do it because I want to make sure I'm not telling you wrong or not page down but, but end and that takes me to the pre, the preview pane and then I have to 
then I have to interact well, with it. When you go, when you first open system preferences, if you if you write arrow or VO write arrow twice, the preview pane is going to be right there. So, but no, you have to be on the preference pane first. Then you can hit the tab key to automatically interact. Yep. Oh. So yeah, okay. You have to be on the prep. You have to be on the preference pane first. So. Okay, and then you can hit SO or MI right. or whatever it is you want to touch ID. Yep. Whatever yeah. you want to do, I for internet accounts and all that. I've been using a Mac since two thousand eight, so I'm not unexperienced. Um, but I, there are things that I know I need to get better at. So. I did the quick start like um, Cliff suggested, and um, there was something, I think it was in panel 17 about the auto web spots. And I don't, I didn't, I didn't quite understand that. I feel like that's something that I could do better um, navigating in Safari. So I was hoping you could talk about that. An auto web spot is kind of misleading because. You can set them, but you have to be on the exact page where you set them. So if it's not a page you go to very often, I would, I don't even use, I don't use web spots. I don't use hot spots and I forgot the other one, but I don't use none of those because I don't always go to the exact same page every time. Now, if that's something that you go to because you're in school and it's a university website, then it probably would be helpful. Maybe it's something you go to because that's the work website or something you have to go to, then it would be helpful. But if you're not going to the exact same page every time, then it's not going to populate to another page and find the same thing. Because what you're ultimately doing is setting up an, um, an advanced search, pretty much. You're telling it, look for these words every time I come to this page and jump to it instead of reading everything that's before it. So that's basically what you're doing. Okay. So if I go on quick nav and it comes to, um, web spots, there's nothing's going to show up there unless I have set web spots. Unless you have set web spots. And if you're on the exact page where you set them, so when you go to I, I, I navigate more by headings and links tables, buttons, and checkboxes. Them, them are my go-tos because I know it's going to get me to where I want to go, usually. And those things are always on every 95% of the web pages out there. Right. Okay, good. Plus, yeah. if, okay. You wanna, if you want to skip over all the graphics and all the advertisements and all that extra stuff, just push Command-Shift-R and it'll put you in reader mode and you'll get nothing but the text anyway. So does that still work? Oh, yeah. Okay, because I tried that. I, it's been a long time, and I because I remember I used to try doing command. The only way it wouldn't work is if the developer or the web designer didn't, you know, put reader mode in their web page. But ninety five percent of web pages, well, maybe ninety percent more of them have it these days. There's not a, a a blog or a website that I went to in the last year that hasn't had one. But I don't. What about item chooser? I used to use item chooser all the time, and now yeah, item, item chooser doesn't it, seem to work. It's still there, uh, VO, Command, I, and, um, you know, you can use first letter navigation to get to whatever you're, you know, to try to look for what you're using, looking for, so. I'm really excited about taking this class. I want to tell you that, Cliff. Um, I've been using my Mac for four years, and, I mean, I'm doing basic stuff with it, but I'd like to learn more. But the question I have, I have a friend whose uh, Windows laptop went down. Um, I mean, it just crashed. So I convinced her that she should go out and get a MacBook. <laughs> and now she's got it. And she has her, she uses her iPhone to do her email. But she tried to set up her account in, you know, on her computer, on her MacBook. And Google wants her to, wants to, she goes into forgot password. Okay. Um, and they come up with a, uh, dialogue for her to put in her previous password and it's like how can she put in her previous one when she doesn't even remember what it was okay um if we get this situation straightened out would it be which could she join the class um you know if, if we get her macbook up and running because i think she <clears throat> would really benefit from this <laughs> absolutely all you have to do is if the, you still have the email that i sent you with the youtube playlist and yes 
yes. the Zoom. I'm not even going to tell people to go to the calendar no more because everybody's having a problem with that. <laughs> but if you have the Zoom link, it never changes. It'll always be the same on Thursday. And the playlist is always going to be the same on Monday. It'll just have a new recording up there each Monday. So, yes, you can definitely join the class. And if, Okay, you know, great. I do, offer, I do offer one-on-one paid training, too. So if she gets to the point where she might need some little extra help, then you know, support at ttjtech.net and let us know. Okay. All righty. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm curious about any finance management software that you know of that's yeah, I'm co- m- more in, in the personal, not business, just for personal finance management. I'm still using uh, Money Talks on Windows, which is getting a little long in the tooth and kind of oh, curious about man. any Mac options. Um. Are you mean something to read money or just, you know? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Like to just actually just like keep track of checkbook and, you know, do um, budgeting. And some people like that. say that QuickBooks is accessible on the Mac. I've never tried it because one, I don't have a business and two, it's a little spendy. Right. And, but if you, I hate to use this analogy, but <laughs> if you are familiar with Excel mm-hmm. from Windows, yep. then numbers is your friend. Okay. Because what I did when I first came over to the Mac, because I, I, you know, that is probably one of the one programs that I do miss over on Windows is Excel because Excel and JAWS go together like peanut butter and jelly. True. So, and I wrote a lot of formulas and spreadsheets and, you know, books over there. And all I had to do was import them into numbers and they stayed exactly the same. So wow. if you're familiar with writing formulas. Okay familiar then you they can pretty much do the same thing i mean it's come a long way back in 2014 and 15 as you know they were it was numbers was horrible i mean it was not even worth opening but right. now i mean it's, it's nowhere good as excel it's nowhere good as that but it's way better than it used to so okay you know and that's what i would use i mean because it's it comes with the Mac. I mean, yeah. the, I mean, you know, sure. I mean, if unless you have an older one and right. it's accessible. So but my question is, when you do your safari lesson, uh, which I know you're going to do, the thing that hangs me up a lot of times with Mac on safari, and this is really stupid, but it really is what happens is I'll be in quick nav and navigating by this and navigating by that. Then I need to fill out a big old form. And I have to get out of quick nav and get into the form. And somehow or another, I manage to get lost. And I don't know whether other people <laughs> that happen or not. The it's- easy fix for that is when you get to the <laughs> form where you need to put the text at, before you turn quick nav off, VO spacebar to let these, how's about to call it, VC over, voice over to <laughs> know that you're about, that you want to, that that's the field where you want to type. Once you VO spacebar, turn quick nav off and you should be able to fill out the form with no issues. Am I going to need to interact? No, because you're turning quick nav off and you that put the. That's fine. Again, my problem too. Yeah. So VO space bar, quick nav off, and then write. You don't have to then interact. Then do you tab to each field after that or you not? You can, no. but I just, I'm kind of, you know, the old schooler, I guess. I kind of use my VO keys because I started on Snow Leopard and back then we didn't have quick nav. Now, what I wanted to ask is um, okay, so when I'm in Safari, uh, I do VOU, uh, the um, web rotor, and I navigate by links and headings mostly. But you mentioned that you like to navigate by buttons. How do you, where, where do you, can you add buttons to the, to the web router? You don't have to. It's automatically there. But that's when you're using single letter navigation, which can be toggled on and off by VOQ. So once quick single letter navigation is on, you can hit B for button, L for link, V for visited oh, link, C okay. for checkbox, okay. X for lists, R for elements, and so on and so forth. Right. Okay, well, here's the part two. So today I was doing top tech tidbits, and I like doing that best on, on the Mac with uh, headings, navigating through headings. But once I get, you know how it's organized where there's an item number, let's say number 10, and I and I like what that is and I want it, so I go to that heading, but then I want to hear what that is, uh, then t- today it didn't work. As I have done it before and today it wasn't working for me. So once you get to the heading and you hear heading you like, how do you get to the 
the next line under the heading that gives you more information about that item. Now, you're not using quick nav, so you should just no. be able to use your down arrow and read it that way. Um, I can't speak to it because I've never used headings that way in an email because that's what you're reading in the email, right? Oh, yeah, but but that particular thing, Top Tech Tidbits, the best way to go through it is through headings. Right, but, but what I'm saying is it's in the email messages you're getting, right? Right. Right, so yeah, I've never... I mean, I've I've done links and just activated it and went to the web through emails, but I've never actually read an email by headings that way. I'm assuming you can just, you know, H for heading if you have single letter navigation on, turn single letter navigation off when you get to the heading you want, and you should just be able to down arrow and read whatever that heading well, is. Don't well, quote me I, on it, but that's the way it, it theoretically it should work. Um just a, a question. I've never used single letter navigation. I, I use for headings and links and lists and all those kind of things. Um, I'll either use quick nav and do it that way with the arrow keys, or I do VO command and H or VO command L. Right. Um, and but if you toggle quick letter, single letter navigation with VOQ, it'll say single letter navigation on or single letter navigation off. Once it's on, you don't need to use the VO command keys. All you do is have to hit it's single letter navigation for a reason. H for headings, L for links, B for buttons, so on and so on. Okay. So, okay. Okay. That's interesting. All right. Maybe, I don't know if that's quicker or not, but. We'll see. <laughs> we, we we say all the time at TTJ, it's personal preference. You know, whatever makes yeah, whatever's okay. comfortable for you. Things I have my Mac for about a year, still slowly learning how to use it. Um, what I'm having trouble with is a folder navigation. For example, I have OneDrive on the Mac, and I have other devices because it's just easier to transfer documents. But how do I get? It easily get to all my folders without having to memorize command shift L for downloads, command shift A for applications. I can't even find OneDrive folder. Now, the, the, you were on you were on a roll. I was about to say, what do you need me for? So the way <laughs> the where you want to go to get to your OneDrive, because I'm assuming you installed it from the the apps, the Mac App Store, and yes. you signed in and all that. You want to go to your home folder, which is Command Shift H. Once you uh -huh. do that, you'll find your OneDrive folder, unless you told it to put it somewhere else. Oh, I just left it alone by default. Thank that. Okay. That, okay. Just like oh, just like uh, just like on the, the keyboard shortcuts for the iPhone, except you just add the shift. Right. Okay. Right. So yeah, Command Shift H, and then interact with that table. Or however you do. I don't know if you use quick nav or not. You know, everybody has their own way. I mean, no way is wrong. But once I you do about that, it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but once you uh command shift H, that'll take you to your home folder. Mm -hmm. Okay, that'll work. And the only question is whenever I open up, say, the pages app or Word, I'm trying to read something, or even email voiceover, it just starts reading everything at once. How do I switch? Can I switch to where it just automatically defaults to reading line by line um, in the documents and emails? I forgot how to do that. Uh, is it through the rotor or is it through the... Well, if you want to read it at your own pace, you're going to have to use the arrow keys. Right. Just turn just turn quick nav off and use your arrow key. And okay. but if you but if you wanted to, I mean if you're doing the say all command or the read all command, which is VOA, or you're just the old space bar and on it to open it, then it's gonna read it all at once anyway. So you just have to stop it and use your arrow keys to read it the pace you want it to. I have and, my and, and just for a little tip for anybody who's listening, by default, if you have Catalina or above, I think it is, your modifiers are automatically going to be set to both um, both um, the VO keys, which is command or control and option, and the caps lock key unless you change it. So if you want to go to the desktop or the dock quickly, just do caps lock in the letter B as one left key you got to push, and it'll automatically take you there. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, mine's set up like that. So if you do caps lock D, you're automatically going to land on the dock. If you add okay. the shift key, it's going to take you to the desktop. Okay, my, I gotcha. My, I didn't know that. But but Thanks. my desktop and my dock are both empty. 
All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us with more with the Mac Interactive. Remember, support at ttjtech.net if you have any questions, anything you want us to cover next week. There will be a short demo. Remember, be on time because we're going to start at 7 o'clock sharp. Thanks for joining more with the Mac Interactive. If you didn't get your questions answered or you have another concern, email support at ttjtech.net. I'm Trainer Cliff. Thanks for joining us.